Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. I'm Rick Manning with George Landreth, here with my special guest, Scott Walter, the Capital Research Center. If you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show or for more information, please check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. Yes, Creedence Clearwater Revival show.com, although we will not be playing any CCR music today. Uh, also, please like us, friend us, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Just look for the Conservative Commandos. Yes, that's Conservative Commandos Radio, CCR Radio. They, Creedence Clearwater kind of stole it, so it's ours. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm, I'm here with Scott, and you'll, you'll notice, those of you who are, are looking online or are, um, are, are viewing us in the AUN network out in California, um, you will notice that Scott's backdrop has changed. And, you know, in the break, um, you know, Scott had to move because he's at his home and he had all sorts of family activities going on around him. And he decided it was the distractions were overwhelming him. And you know what? Every one of us can understand that in, in this day and age of having to try to move around a little bit. It just makes it a little more real. So, Scott, you've humanized the thing for us. Thank you very much. This was my <laughs> sterile environment at work. The, tell, tell me about, uh, we were talking a little bit about Tides Foundation, about kind of some of the groups that play point guard for the left. And, and Tides is particularly interesting to me because they get, they get involved in a lot of environmental stuff. But also, they, they, seem, to, I don't, they seem to skate along in a, in a quasi-legal state from the way I look at it. Tell me, who, to, who are Tides Foundation, first of all, and what do they do? What's their function? Sure. They were started decades ago, uh, and they are no small. They're they're the better part of $100 million a year in money flow. Uh, by the way, for, for full details on the, all this, I should add, we have our uh, website, influencewatch.org, and you can look up any things we're talking about, all the facts and figures and documentation. But uh, Tides was started decades ago by a left-wing activist, and it's the original, you know, the, the left loves to scream about dark money. Um, <laughs> but oddly enough, apparently only right wing money can be dark money because they use all the same types of funding vehicles. Uh, but there's never get called dark money. But anyway, Tides is arguably the first dark money political operation. And it started, as I said, decades ago when a left wing activist had a, uh, a wealthy couple that wanted to give money to an environmentalist group, but didn't want it to wanted to, to make the money trail not be obvious. So he created the Tides Foundation so that it would take their money and then it would write the check um, so that you couldn't see uh, point A to point B there. Now, uh, ironically, it's much bigger than, for instance, Donors Trust, which is the favorite boogeyman of the left for conservative quote unquote dark money groups. Uh, uh, but, um, the way Tides works is it funds all kinds of other different groups. And especially, you know, if you're a wealthy business guy, but you don't want people to know that you're funding really nasty, radical groups, well, you just give the money to Tides and it goes through. To me, one of the weirder, more fascinating aspects here is, you know who one of the lar year after year, somebody who's been one of the very largest of all the funders to Tides has been the Pew Charitable Trusts. Now, that seems odd because they're a charitable institution themselves. They can write their own checks. Why in the world would they need to send money through the Tides Foundation? And yet they do. And my suspicion is that it's twofold. One is they don't want people to be able to see the groups that they're funding. And then second, uh, Tides takes, you know, you take some money off the top when you have it flowing through like that, typically. And if Pew gives Tides lots of money, they can cover a lot of its overhead, making, you know, ensuring that this very valuable left wing operation gets to continue. Now, there's another thing that they've done in recent years. They have set up the Tides Center, which is uh, legally separate. And basically, it's an incubator for left wing groups. So, you know, let's say you you're a wonderful visionary on the left and you're going to save the world with whatever the greatest new thing is. And but you don't know how to raise money and you don't have an accountant and all that. Well, you just go in one of their lovely offices. They have they've got the Presidio in San Francisco. One of the most gorgeous things in the country is all handed over to them. That was, I'm sure, a fun deal to negotiate. And uh, the other thing that's good about the Tide Center and incubating, though, is, you know, sometimes you got a great idea. And we hope that five years from now, you're going to be a 10 million dollar organization. 
But then other times, especially if you're a left-wing activist, you just want a group for about six weeks, say October 1 to November <laughs> 7 or so. Right. Well, easy. You set it up at the Tide Center. You do your fine, noble work for saving humanity right up to the election, and then poof, you're gone. No mess, no fuss, no records. Very convenient. Very convenient. Let, let me ask you, the, there's a, um, and, and I'm not sure if I'm right on this, but it's, I remember reading that there were uh, a number of, of these left-wing activist groups that are basically housed out of the same location um, and their websites all trace the same location. Everything traces to like uh, a one one office in somewhere in Oakland or uh, out in California. Um, is that is that normal? Is that how how are you familiar with that kind of phenomenon? Yeah. That that's not unusual. You may be thinking of the uh, Citizens Engagement Lab uh, and I mean, and its friends and. They have been, you know, their most impressive work has been harassing a lot of the corporations that are uh, support the American Legislative Exchange Council, the sort of trade group for right. conservative state legislators. And what they will do is uh, you're a nice CEO of a company and you found it valuable to join Alec and you, you know, you give money to Alec and pe they, they discover that you're connected. And so... All of a sudden, one day, you start getting letters, and you get a letter from a Hispanic group, and then you get a letter from an immigrants group, and then you get a letter from this, that, and the other kind of group. And um, that is all of their little letterhead organizations swinging into action. But if you go to ourinfluencewatch.org and you look you know, look into all this, you discover, well, this group has the same people on its board as that group, and this group has an address that's the the same as that group. And, you know, the whole point is just to have uh, lots of different uh, uh, lots of different letterheads making claims that lots of different constituent groups are furious about you unless you do what they're bidding. And similarly, they use Twitter accounts and the like to create social justice campaigns that appear to have a lot of a lot of different groups behind them, which then allows an MSNBC to pick it up as being this movement, um, yes. which they then refer to the number of interest groups that are talking about it. And so then suddenly it gets nationalized through an MSNBC type of outlet. So then NBC can pick it up and it becomes a, and then the rest of the networks have it. And next thing you know, something which is really, you know, three guys in a, in a, in a closet in Oakland, California, ends up being viewed as a national movement. I think they did that with Rush against Rush Limbaugh, yes. they, with the Sandra Fluke thing, and they've and they've attempted with Hannity and others. And 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 so how do we how do we find out? How do we should we always be suspicious when these things pop up and all of a sudden something becomes the latest thing that everybody's woke about? Or Absolutely. And and again, I mean that's why we created influencewatch.org because you go to one and then all of a sudden you have links to the others and you start seeing well, these are the same people doing, you know, com completely different, quote unquote, things. So it's it, the, the left is great at this. I mean, the, you mentioned the, the, the Rush Limbaugh thing. You know, somebody had a file cabinet worth of stuff and they were just waiting for a good opportunity. Actually, I know it was David Brock. There's the, the Brocktopus, as we refer to it, all his different groups. And, you know, he swings into action. And they're, you know, they they same people behind the Hannity attacks. Um, you know, they're they're always ready and. Wham! The second there's opportunity, they strike. So when somebody wants to find out, if they hear about a group and they want to find out, is this a legitimate group or is this some left-wing made-up group? The first place they should go is influencewatch.org and type yeah. the group's name in and see what they can find out from there and be able to follow the trails. It's sort of like Ancestry.com, except for really scary. <laughs> um, and so and your Capital Research Center is the ones who've done that. So it's influencewatch.org. Again, yeah, or com <laughs> dot com, either one. Okay, so you can so keep that in your memory banks because that's where you're going to go to find out exactly who these groups are, and it's Capital Research Center that's, that's putting that together, doing a great job in trying to help us be able to decipher the left. 
Scott, thank you very much for your time and joining us. We, we really appreciate the time and the effort, particularly the effort that you're putting in. Um, and if somebody wanted to reach you specifically, Capital Research Center, what is your email address? Sure. I'm swalter at capitalresearch.org. Okay, so uh, so the main website is capitalresearch.org. Very yeah. good. Very good. And, and Twitter? Uh, at Capital Research. At Capital Research. Sorry, I didn't ask me to ask hard questions. Very good. Thank you, Scott. You're great. We're going to, you know, we're going to wrap up the show. And, you know, I, I just want to thank everybody for listening, for watching. This is a great two hours of radio, TV, online content. And we just appreciate all your help. And we will talk to you next week. Same time, same channel.